That's all I got. Yeah, that, no, that was great. Baltimore is one of those hidden gem cities I really don't know much about, which is why I've come to the city to learn about the beer scene from that guy. What's up? Hey, Isaac. Hey, morning, Kenny. Ready to take me on a tour? Let's get you set up. Isaac is like that bouncer who slips you in behind the scenes at your favorite shows. Today, he's taking me on a private tour of Heavy Seas, one of Baltimore's best known breweries. Gentlemen, how we doing guys? Hey, good morning, Aaron. We're gonna start with a well-made lager, if you don't mind. Can't start off a tour of a Baltimore brewery without some Baltimore beer. Absolutely. Didn't want to put down my beer, but That's right. safety first. Feel like I'm about to go on a terrific jog. This is a heavy-duty production facility. What you're looking at is a pilot brewery. These are for one-offs, small batches, things that they want to try or test out before they release them or just like put in the tasting room. And this is their canning line over here. With cans, if you order in bulk, then you need a space to store all of those said cans. This is like a uh, can Jenga here. You pull one out and right. the whole thing comes down. Oh. Oh, there we oh. go. Hopefully I don't topple the there entire thing. This is a 200 barrel fermenter that we're looking at right here. It says BBL, which actually stands for British Beer Barrel, which is a metric in the brewing industry. A barrel of beer is 31 and a half gallons. And there's a bunch of these. Absolutely. This is the final stage of beer. They're just conditioning it. From here, they can either put it into barrels, kegs, bottles, cans. This is designed to get all that beer ready to go out and into people's mouths. So this really gives you the overarching view of what we like to call the hot side of things. So we start with the process of making something called wort, which is essentially sugar water. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna take all of that wort and they're gonna boil it. Traditionally, we probably did this to sanitize it, but now we're doing it these days to go ahead and add our hops. So how many barrels of beer is Heavy Seas putting out into the market each year? 35,000 barrels of beer. This system down here is brewing anywhere from 120 to 200 barrels. You're making like one beer each time that you run it. There's something I, I kind of want to do. What's uh, that? You ever seen The Lion King? <laughs> That's all I got. Yeah, that, no, that was great. Let's bring you into the tasting room, show you some beers. Have you ever done a beer appraisal before? Never in my life. We're gonna talk a little bit about the appearance, what it smells like, the taste, mouthfeel, and then the finish. This is their most popular IPA. This is the Loose Cannon. You can see that's got a nice head on the top there. That beer is very clear. So the next thing that you're gonna do there, and you've actually already done it, is you're gonna take a whiff of that beer. Tell me a little bit about what you smell. I smell hops. A little earthier, some citrus, yeah. definitely. Kind of slurp it a little bit and roll it over your tongue. I am getting some of that orange pith, yeah. if you will. Citrusy for sure. There's a there's a bit of pine in there. Yeah. Um, maybe some of those old world hops. Yeah. So this is when we're gonna start talking about mouthfeel. I think I'm getting a little more carbonation. Okay. And then the finish of your beer. You probably have remaining bitterness left over. And obviously you don't have to do this every time you have a beer. That was awesome. And I'm gonna say cheers. Cool. Cheers. So we're here in Brewers Hill, and we're at a place called Mobtown Brewing. They opened up in 2019 in April. And what's special about Mobtown? What are they doing here? Not only are they making delicious beer, but they also have a unique location. And this is the first brewery to be producing beer here in Brewers Hill in 41 years. And something that we offer to all of our groups every time we take them out is not only do we teach you the grain to glass experience, but we also teach you how beer and food pair together. So we've got a great flight lined up to go ahead and pair with this Chaps that we just picked up right here. Chaps is a Baltimore classic place where you can get pit cooked beef 
there's no better pairing than barbecue and beer. I think that I picked a really good lineup here where everything's gonna work really well. This is an exquisite torture, just sitting here looking at this beer, looking at this food. Yeah, absolutely. And we haven't broken into it yet. Yeah, let's eat. Dig on in and start drinking these beers. The order of operations is really important in the way that you introduce them to your palate. And you're gonna notice that you're gonna get two different flavor profiles in the way that whatever hits your palate first. These beers are great. I'd come back to Mobtown for a lager any day. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited for you to get to this Irish stout here because I think that's gonna be the winning combo. I'm going for it. It's surprising. It's one of those like, don't judge a book by its cover kind of thing. It's light. Yeah. Kind of cuts through that fat a little right. bit. So the brewing scene in Baltimore, 13 breweries roughly? Roughly 13 breweries, yeah. And this is a, this is a pretty big city, right? It's a big, small city, and it's very networked, too. You know, we were talking about this earlier. The community, everybody is very collaborative, and everybody knows everybody else. And it's only growing, you know. Uh, just on the outskirts, there's a lot of breweries, too, that are popping up. How have you seen Baltimore change in the last couple of years? I've just seen it grow. Everybody's making really good beer. The food scene is popping up, you know, stuff like this that people don't know about, but it's, like, right around the corner. I think what I'd like to see now, just not just in Baltimore, but everywhere, is sort of that beer market opening back up again. I think we are seeing that just across America that want to get back out. I mean, you go to some cities, there would be a line around the block for something like this. Right. And I think we waited, what, for four minutes and everybody in that restaurant was clearly someone who worked in the neighborhood. Right, 100%. And you know, the same can be said for breweries too. That's one thing I like about Baltimore is the hype isn't chased. I believe beer should be accessible and I believe beer should be good. You know, I don't think you need a lawn chair and a like Yeti cooler to have to get fresh cans. In your whole time giving tours in Baltimore, almost six years, what's the coolest thing you've learned about Baltimore? Yeah, I'm in all these breweries every day, I need more beer at home, like I need a hole in my head, but I always have a 30 rack of Natty Bow at home. I learned that I enjoy like a nice bohemian Pilsner just all the time. And Natty Bow is the people's beer of Baltimore? That's the people's, I call it the people's beer of Baltimore. I think yeah. it is. One of the reasons that we actually started building roads and paving and, and laying down bricks or anything around here was to bring in ingredients to start making beer. In the early 90s, if you wanted craft beer, you had to come to Baltimore. Baltimore has been known for beer historically. Isaac, thank you for an incredible day. Thank you so much for coming out. I appreciate it. I'm gonna leave you here at Checker Spot with my friend Judy. You're in great hands. Until next time, sir. Cheers. Cheers. Judy, what were you doing before this? So I actually got my PhD at Johns Hopkins. Ended up doing my postdoc at NIH, doing a lot of virus work, so a lot of vaccine work. If you're a doctor, Judy. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Very cool. Mr. and Doctor. Tell me about the brewery. Uh, how did you guys start it? We went on a tour yeah. of Anchor, Anchor Brewing with my um, aunt and uncle. Thought this is really cool and came home and started home brewing. Has your microbiology education played into your brewing at all? You know, it is a biological process, what's going on from the start of the brew to the end of the brew. You know, I've never really been scared of the science side of it. Over here is the actual brew house. So we've got the mash tun where the grains get milled over there. We do the mash there. It goes over to the boil kettle here. It's where we add some hops, chill it down, and it goes to the fermenters over here. That's where we add the yeast and the magic of sugar turns into carbon dioxide and alcohol. The uh, microbiology equation. Right? It's all science. Yeah. <laughs> of you are married. Talk to me about that dynamic. <laughs> we each have our parts of the business that we do. I am head of sales and distribution. I fix things, I build stuff. We have very complementary mm -hmm. skill sets. It's nice to be able to sort of divide and conquer. Five years ago, if somebody told you this is where you'd be, what would you have said? What it is now, I don't know if I would have believed it. It was scary starting up. Yes. Yeah, like, are people gonna come? Are people gonna like the beer? And we've had a ton of support from our family, friends, and community. These serving tanks are hooked up directly to our tap lines. So yeah, you're drinking beer, like, straight from the source. 
Yeah, it's a pretty big keg. It's pretty big keg. It's a really big keg. It's quite a party. Yeah. I'd like to show you our cooler, if I may. Welcome to heaven, oh, huh? There we oh, go. Oh, wow. I hear uh, a chorus of angels. How many barrels uh, a year are you guys up to now? Around 1,500. And we do want to give a shout out. One of our best friends, Adam Miller, he does all of the artwork. So this is the guy that did your welding? Yeah, that's, and... his, that's his face. We surprised him with it, and it was really sweet when he saw it. He was like, yeah. Do you, uh, you frequently put people's faces on beers? He's the second. We did our electrician. That's, uh, did you say Jerry Garcia or your electrician? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So where does the name Checker Spot come from? What's the Maryland State butterfly? It's the Checker Spot. The Baltimore Checker Spot. Baltimore Checker Spot. Yeah. I didn't actually know that, by the way. You kind yeah. of, you, you led me to that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, cheers to Maryland. Cheers. Yeah. As I was researching Baltimore, I heard about something I didn't know existed. Maryland Rye Whiskey. In 1911, Maryland produced 5.6 million gallons of rye, third to only Kentucky and Pennsylvania. And since whiskey is really just distilled beer, I'm meeting up with Ryan Norwood, director of operations at Baltimore-based Sagamore Spirit, to learn more about the style. So everything we do here is open top fermenters, which is awesome. It gives uh, people an opportunity to come in, see the actual fermentation in process. They just kind of stick their hand in there, taste it. Can I do it? Yeah, absolutely. Sour. Yeah, it is. So a lot of the stuff we're looking for is, is kind of a balance of, of bacteria that, that live like naturally in the air. It helps with flavor, it helps with pH. We basically take it from zero alcohol to about seven and a half percent alcohol. This is almost a three day. Once that fermentation process is stopped, it pushes all that rye grain up to the top and forms sometimes like a 15 to 20 inch cap. So functionally, you're making beer and then you distill it and that's whiskey. It doesn't actually become whiskey till we put it into a barrel. We have a byproduct called stillage that is just grain and water on the back end, and then the distillate is what we're the alcohol that we've removed out of it. We have a 40 foot tall, 24 inch diameter copper column still, and you can actually see on here there's some of that grain is caked on the sight glass because, like I said, as we distill with the grain in there. And then the distillate is what goes into barrels to become whiskey? Exactly. How long does the whiskey sit in the barrels here? So we do everything for four years. We make a straight rye whiskey, which means that it is at least 51% rye grain. Right now our main focus is, is a Maryland style rye whiskey. This is our area to do research and development. What if we make a small adjustment to the mash or to the recipe? This system here allows us to do that kind of stuff. I see on your shirt it says Sagamore Spirit 1909. So 1909 actually refers to a spring house that's located on Sagamore Farm. It used to be a thoroughbred racehorsing farm that was owned by the Vanderbilts, built in 1909. And that's how we got our name. And that's the water that we actually bring down at least once a week to cut all of our product. When a barrel, after it turns at least four years old, you basically roll them on here, flip it out. It's got a fine mesh screen on it that you can actually dump all the whiskey through. That whiskey is then pumped upstairs to where we store it in what we call a ratio tank. And then from there, that's when we can start making our blending and, and get ready for our finished product. How heavy is a barrel when it's full? Uh, about 500 pounds. Yeah. You can lift one by yourself? Uh, no way. So this is our packaging line. It's very, very manual, very hands-on. We have a custom-made bottle, so like everything had to be custom designed for that bottle. This is a four-year-old aged whiskey and then dumped and put back into new wave stave barrels. We do a, a very light char on it and then a toast on the barrel, which helps uh, bring out some more of those toasted marshmallow flavors. Cheers. Cheers. It comes in at 96.6 .6 proof, but still should be very balanced, very approachable. And that's our biggest thing, is we try to go for a very approachable rye whiskey. So how did you get into this? I actually did uh, brewing before this. I was going to school for microbiology at the time, and they said New Belgium Brewing Company is looking for an intern. So I worked in their, uh, in their lab. What's the most interesting thing that you learned at New Belgium that applies to your job today? Culture and team is everything. Like, nobody does this on their own. We're all here together, striving to make the best product we can. I thought you were going to tell me something about 
brewing. <laughs> and you came at me with that. Bring a tear to my eye. <laughs> Here we are. That's beautiful. So the other one here is our, our cast strength. It's like that 83, just bumped up a little bit and you'll get those kind of traditional rye spice. There's gonna be a little bit of earthiness to it that comes from the rye, but then there should be pretty balanced sweetness at the back end from the corn. I do get that sweetness. Yeah. No one really agrees what Maryland style rye whiskey is. What is it to you? And do people agree on the definition? It should be up for interpretation. For us, it is a, a very well-balanced rye that, that has a little bit more of that corn component to add some sweetness to it to help balance it out. What is your favorite thing about living in Baltimore? People are very prideful of, of the city and the state of Maryland. They've got an unbelievable food scene here, and it's kind of a, a gem, so. Well, thanks for having me in. Absolutely, Kenny. Cheers. Cheers. If you're looking for harbor views, an unpretentious beer scene, or if you want to hang out with my buddy Isaac from City Brew Tours, Baltimore might be the city for you. Until then, cheers. Cheers.